December 12, 1972. In a harsh lunar valley, Apollo 17 astronaut Harrison Jack Schmidt is working against the clock on one of the most demanding missions in NASA's history. What nobody realizes is that this is NASA's final manned moon mission. If the lunar scientists don't get what they need now, there may never be another opportunity. With the intense work schedule, the amount of time Schmidt devotes to taking photographs surprises some observers. But the pictures he takes are breathtaking. These photos are iconic. In fact, the blue marble is one of the most widely recognized photos in the history of the world. The whole Apollo collection of photographs is remarkable in, in how, how well they were taken and in how well they turned out. The photos were intended to capture the public imagination, rekindling interest in the moon. And they did, but not in the way NASA expected. There are still people around today who believe that NASA never went to the moon for that. It was all some sort of elaborate hoax. And Schmidt's photos are a key part of the conspiracy theory. One of the biggest arguments about Apollo fakery is that the photographs are wrong. There are no stars in any of the photographs uh, that are taken on the moon. According to former shuttle flight controller James Oberg, the photos lack stars because the astronauts adjusted their camera settings to compensate for the moon's unique light conditions. Out on the lunar surface in bright sunlight, the light sensitivity of your camera will be so low that the starlight is just too weak to register. But some people question other aspects of the Apollo 17 images. They argue that objects in the photos appear to be lit from more than one direction when the only source of light on the lunar surface should be the sun. The shadow conspiracy. You can see that that astronaut's shadow is going off toward the left side, and that this shadow is going straight up. We're told by the conspiracy theorists that it's on a soundstage where multiple lights are lighting the scene. The conspiracy theorists may be right about the lighting, but not the conspiracy. The moon's highly unusual reflective properties may actually be responsible for the multi-directional shadows. It has uh, what we sometimes call a very high backscatter property. This means that the bright white surfaces of the moon act like a mirror reflecting light from the original source at a variety of angles. That gives you a very bright return off that surface. Uh, because it's getting uh, the light directly reflected from uh, my many, many different sources. So it is possible that the moon's reflective power could cause multi-directional shadows. But that doesn't explain one very important detail. If this picture received light from multiple angles, the strong visible shadows suggest that each figure should have more than one shadow. But they don't, so there must be another explanation. When you look at the raw photographic image, it is clear that it's been shot on an extreme wide-angle lens, which causes what's known as a fisheye effect. This curves the picture, making the shadows converge on one central focal point. It changes their direction so that they look like they're going the wrong way, when in fact, when viewed from above, they're perfectly in line with each other. December 2nd, 1988. The five crew members of a classified mission, STS-27, blast off from the Kennedy launch pad at Cape Canaveral. Atlantis begins another space voyage as it clears the town. I'll never forget how the booster rockets, which shine with a light as bright as the sun, how it lit up the launch pad and lit up seemed like the whole state of Florida. Shuttle Commander Hoot Gibson leads the top secret mission, but even today, none of the crew members can talk about the secrets of that flight. The launch gets off to the worst possible start. But in the first minute, a piece from the rocket booster came off and ripped its way down the belly of the shuttle itself, creating damage to hundreds of tiles. 
Eight minutes after takeoff, the stricken shuttle manages to reach the relative safety of orbit. We want to start shooting pictures right away. So we actually do break out some of the cameras very quickly. Only when the cameras track across the body of the shuttle does the threat become apparent. Anytime we see something or, or we have something going on on board the orbiter, we're going to talk to mission control about it because they're going to help us. Yes. If we call them and tell them, hey, our tiles are falling off, is this going to be a mission impact to us? The crew beams footage of the damage down to Houston. But the classified nature of the mission has an unforeseen consequence. As a result of the security regulations on communications, the pictures coming down were of poorer quality and lower resolution. The crew is seeing the photos and videos live and realizes the seriousness of the situation. Mission Control is seeing degraded images and doesn't think it's as big a concern. All systems performing well. Because Mission Control can't see the extent of the damage on the low resolution footage, they don't acknowledge the problem. Though Hoot Gibson declined to be interviewed about the subject, some observers believe that the crew had no choice but to conduct an unauthorized spacewalk to fix the damaged heat shield. The crew could have done something against the wishes of NASA and tried to do some kind of repair. Flight crew is in charge of the vehicle, and so they're in the best position to know what the best thing to do is at the, at the time. And so sometimes that could run counter to the desires of mission control. But if a shuttle has suffered critical damage, there is a limit to what the crew can do to fix it. NASA refuses to confirm or deny that the spacewalk took place during mission STS-27. Whether or not the damage was repaired, the crew has no choice but to attempt re-entry. During re-entry, a superheated 2,900 degree Fahrenheit wave of plasma forms on the heat shield, eating into the damaged tiles. Once you start back into the atmosphere and if the tiles don't protect you or otherwise, there's no real alternatives left. You're just gonna burn up. They were facing a life and death re-entry. Finally, Atlantis touches down at Edwards Air Force Base. When ground staff inspect the damaged craft, they discover just how close the mission came to disaster. More than 700 tiles were damaged. It was, it was heart stopping because it was the most severe damage to a shuttle heat shield uh, that had ever been experienced. It barely held together. 